Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I'm Hal Weeks, as always. And uh, first, I want to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. I couldn't do it without you, literally. Thank you so much. I am recording today on a new camera, new gear, um, funded by my supporters over on Patreon. They keep this video blog happening. This series uh, would not be what it is without them. And uh, I just um, am so thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now without further ado, I want to tell you that I am doing an interview today. Actually, I did it a few weeks ago. Uh, with my friend Greg Olson, who works right here at Daigle Auto Harps. And this is what he does. He builds these things day in and day out, five days a week. And uh, he's been doing it apparently for 13 years. He'll tell you the story. And uh, uh, I just am thank you to him for uh, coming on and uh, doing all of this with me. So let's take it away. Hi everybody, I'm Hal Weeks. Welcome to Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I have a treat that's been a long time coming for you today. Uh, I am here with Greg Olson, who doesn't even play the auto harp. Hardly at all, no. ever. I strummed it yesterday. He strummed it yesterday. My dad was over at my new house, and uh, I showed him my auto harp that I built for myself because I haven't showed it to him yet before. Uh -huh. And uh, I have, I gave him a Desert Rose for his birthday, and I built myself a Paducan Carbon Fiber Model 3, and so I was showing him the differences between those two and how the carbon fiber is like way louder, very clear, a lot of low end, but the wood tops have like kind of a, you know, it's much more warmer presence. So I was showing him that difference. So I strummed it the other day. You strummed it the other day. Yeah. Greg is a luthier here at Daigle Auto Harps and uh, has been for his entire life. He was born here. Mm -hmm. I was right over there. He, he, was, <laughs> uh, he cut his teeth right here. And uh, um, he's got quite a story to tell us. And I'm sure he's going to tell us the story. If I just ask him the right yeah. questions. Um, That's an accurate level of hype. And uh, Greg is actually responsible for a lot of the construction of the auto harps that actually happens. When you get an auto harp from Daigle Auto Harps, his hands have been all over it. He's been all up inside it. He's been, uh, he's cut the wood. He's put it all together. He's done so much and he does the work. He's always flying around in the back. I'm going to get some B-roll of him working on things. Uh, Greg, welcome to Stocking the Wild Auto Harp. Thank you for having me. Uh, tell us the story of like <clears throat> what first got you to come over here, and did you beg for a job? How did it, what happened? Uh, well, I walked in. When was this? First of all, uh, March, two thousand thirteen. Okay. So we're coming up. We just passed. Nine years. I've been here for nine years. Wow. Um, I was looking for a job. My dad said, hey, just go down to SeaTac, and there's an instrument store down there, I think. So I went down here, walked in, uh, asked Pete if he needed some help around with anything. I'll do anything. I just need, need something to do. <laughs> so he's like, sure, you could just start with sweeping floors if you want. So the timing was right. Timing you came was right. in, and there was just there was something here for you. There's, there was dust here for me, which I've learned is always here. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how good the timing was, kind of, you know, but, you know, <laughs> there's always dust that needs sweeping. So you started sweeping the floors. Yeah, and sweeping off the machine. And um, at this point, I mean, did you go out into the world to find a music store to work at? Uh, 
No, well, I had a few odd jobs before that, you know, just doing how odd random things. Very odd. Very so odd. odd. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just you know hourly work here and there, not doing much, you know, uh -huh. not doing anything with music. Right. Um, so, you, how old were you? Um, nine years ago, I was twenty-two. And you had no previous Luthering. I had a little. Well, I mean, no professional experience. I like had built instruments on my own. I built one bass out of particle board. That was about it. So I'm sure you told Pete this. Yeah, I brought that in and showed it to him. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, a, it was just a piece of a door that my dad found <laughs> behind his work at a dumpster. He's like, hey, do you want to use this? I was like, yeah, sure. I can just imagine you coming in with this, like, like instrument that you, what, it was a bass? Yes. And you're like, Please hire me because that is so. I don't, this is all the wood that I can get, and I can't. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Well, I didn't exactly say it that way. And uh, so you started sweeping up, and then, uh, w what was the first, like, actual hands-on auto harp thing you did? I think it was pressing the buttons onto the chord bars. Okay. That was before we had the Arbor Press. You've come a long way, baby. Yeah, I have. Okay, and uh, uh, it was just one thing at a time. Then. One thing Did, at a time. Okay, what about other woodworking besides instrument building? Were you doing other stuff? Um, mm, well, I'd always liked building things and making things and tinkering with things. I mostly did, did that kind of stuff with like electronics when I was younger. Um, and then I got into just woodworking with the stuff I'd find in the firewood pile out behind the house kind of thing. I Oh, I just remembered. I made a little upright base out of a stump and a uh, piece of a table leg. Yeah, I just remembered that. Inventive. <laughs> yeah, and Inventive. the the stump had like all this uh, mold and spalting through it, so I remember it looked kind of cool. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, you... Um, Built a base out of your stump, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> um, did you have any like idea what you were getting into? Mm -mm. Nope. And not a clue. The auto harp um, was calling to you. It was drawing you. Um, you already played. Bass, though. Yeah. Yep, I've been playing bass since 2004. So, 18 years. Okay. And I played, uh, played, I started out on clarinet before that. And bass clarinet. And then ba I moved from clarinet to bass clarinet. Played that through high school. Then played bass in jazz band in high school. So was the bass clarinet like a gateway drug into playing all things bass? It kind of was, yeah. Because I just loved the lower register mm -hmm. and seeing, like, I don't know, a bass guitar seemed way cooler to me than a guitar. And, I mean, my, my dad grew he, when I was growing up, my dad always had the classic rock station on and through, like, the car stereo, all you could hear were the vocals and the guitar and the cymbals. And you, there was, like, no low end. But I, I didn't know that, you know, as a kid. I didn't know what I was hearing. I just no, noticed that it was all, like, pretty tinny high end. Then I noticed the bass was an instrument. It's like, this is kind of cool. I've never really focused on this before. And it seemed, like, way more, there was so much more weight to it. So uh -huh. much, it, was a, more it was a heavy hitter. The guitar wasn't. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And then there's the auto harp. 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 And uh, um, you've now been, like, you do everything. There's very little you don't do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you're learning to do those things. And uh, um, I've seen you just in the three years that I've been here um, um, add more and more... Um, <coughs> steps, things that you do, mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, the way I, I'll tell you that Greg flies around from job to job to job to job and he tracks all of these steps through in his brain you must have some kind of like thing where you're going okay I'll get these clamped up and ready to dry and then I'll run over there and do that and then I'll so you're do you have a regular cycle that you do or is it uh, is it like you're just <coughs> going from the moment that you arrive to the moment that you leave which is what I see I both I guess <laughs> Uh, well, I there depends on what I do. There is a certain rhythm, especially for glue ups. I know that from the time that I finish gluing something up, I can unclamp it in two hours. So if I start something here, that takes two hours. Then if I start something thirty minutes after that, then I can unclamp it thirty minutes after, and then it, there's you know that's just the basic gist of it. And then you can add as many steps into that as you want, so you can have a constant workflow throughout the day and keep things efficiently moving. Well, and one thing that, that really blows my mind is that you keep all of these, you know the numbers, you know the sizes of every cut Yeah. in your head. Mm -hmm. um, it's written down somewhere, but it's changed over the years. It has, and the records aren't kept very well, you know what I mean? So it's like kind of, they're just like kind of, you know, well, we need to figure this out, so we just write it down a little loose leaf piece of paper, throw it in the folder. Right. So, so it's there's, not very. There's like a, um, an original design that has changed and changed again and changed again, and you have tracked all that and you've got it all up here. Mm -hmm. And so, um, if somebody kidnaps you, you guys are sunk. Yeah. <laughs> everybody would be like, pay the ransom. Because <laughs> uh, we don't know what we're doing. We're uh, we're instrument builders. Be like, oh, sorry, <laughs> can't afford that one. <laughs> we're luthiers. Yeah. So you also make, and this is uh, um, part of what I brought you on here for. You make bases. Mm -hmm. You've learned to design and to create your own designs mm -hmm. in these things, and then just. Do you draw them? Yeah, if they're if it's a brand new design, like I built an acoustic bass last year, I think. No, mm -hmm. 2020, I think. Um, and that was a whole new design that I've never done before. So I sketched it all out one to one scale on some butcher paper. So in a situation like that, where I'm doing a totally new design, I will uh, draw it out. Um, other times, like I, I have a few templates here for some bo different body styles. Some like, uh, I, I, I have a short scale base here, that's one body style. I have this one, which is a totally different body style. I have another one that's the same body style as the short scale, but it's a standard scale. So the body's bigger, different proportions, but it looks the same. So I, I have templates here. So tell people what a short scale base is. I think this is cool. Um, well, a standard scale base is uh, 34 inches. The scale length is 34 inches, and that is from the nut to the bridge, just the vibrating length of the string is the scale length, and on a base it's usually 34 inches. A short scale base, well actually I guess the one that I have is medium scale technically, short scale is 30 inches, medium scale is 32 inches, Okay. so that's the one that I have here is 32 inches. Long scale is anything longer than than 34 inches. I have a, a four string that is 35 inches, and uh, I have a couple five strings and a six string that is 36 inches so if you have a shorter vibrating string length and you have to achieve the same notes mm -hmm. with that shorter length do the strings have to be fatter they can well it, they can be it, it depends more on the uh, material of the string because there are like uh, nylon tape wound bass strings that have a steel core so that the pickups can still pick up and vibration because it's through magnetics but the outer wrapping is nylon and then there's like a softer tape wound on the outside and those those are generally super thick because the uh, just the nylon tape on strings feel a lot looser so they have to be thicker to you know add some tension to it so why would somebody choose a short scale base for for a lot of reasons I guess um, I 
Well, I, I like long scale basses because I like the sound they produce. The longer the scale, the more overtones you get and more clarity and more high end you get out of the string. Mm -hmm. um, and if you shorten it, you get more of the fundamental note and less harmonics, less uh, overtones, I mean, coming through. Okay. So it's a very, I don't know, it's more of a pure bass sound. Um, as opposed to a longer scale where it's uh, there's a ton of clarity, which is what I go for. Okay. Um, and I like the clarity because I, I do a lot of like chords and harmonics and stuff. So this is the this is a full scale bass. The, this is a long scale. It's 35 inches. So and it has holes in it. Got holes in did it. Did you run out of wood? I did. <laughs> I did. Oh darn! I should have should have bought more. So this does not work as a hollow body bass, though, because it's got space inside. Um, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, it is slightly louder than a solid body instrument, I've found, just practicing at home without an amp, just acoustically, but that's not the point. The so point the gaps is are, it, it looks cool. It looks cool. That's the only reason. on your little tiny laptop speakers or on your smartphone speakers, get yourself some headphones and plug them in so that you can really hear the frequencies coming from this thing. I guess four, yeah. I guess four. Are those all current? Like, have they resumed? Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, w one band is kind of on a not, not a hiatus, but like we're not really actively trying to book shows right now because the all the not not all the band members are in town currently. So it hasn't um, all like re reconvened. Right. After lockdown and everything but yeah. it's starting to yeah it's been kind of difficult for bands to get their momentum back mm -hmm. both professionally and personally creatively mm -hmm. you know um but uh yeah those are definitely two big roadblocks but yeah that must have been really extreme to like be in a situation where um so much of your professional and social life is based around playing music actively in so many different configurations and then to have all that go away. And I know that yeah. that uh, people who are watching this, a lot of y'all have been through that and are now dealing with the same things of like going back out in the world and um, figuring all this out all over again. And um, has there been like serious, like, I don't know what to call it, like um, attrition to the point of like, eh, let's not do it anymore. No, no. I mean, for me, like my whole social life was playing shows and like every night of the week I was either at a show, seeing a show, I mean, playing a show or at a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And all my friends are musicians or 
bookers or bartenders or you know just the people you see all the time in clubs those kind of those people. kind of people uh-huh. kind of people that aren't ready until noon you know <laughs> right <laughs> musicians yeah um yeah and when i mean when all that went away it was like yeah it was a huge deal it's like how do you know how do you connect with people when that is when music isn't the medium you know that's a huge part of of a, a huge part of musicians life of course it is they're mm-hmm. musicians it's a huge part um so it is tough to get the ball rolling again. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that that's been it's been tough to navigate for a lot of people. A lot of a lot of people, myself included, a lot of people I know. It's tough to figure out how to get back into it. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're all in the same boat. All in the same boat. Yeah. All right. So b- before you move to your other base, show. Hold this up and show us the wood and mm. the back and everything. Yeah, the um, all the the top, the top, the uh, top, the fretboard and the headstock veneer is all Purple Heart. And I used to build instruments that had all these different crazy wood combinations, but I like the simplicity of having all things on the front of the base be the same wood. I think it ties it all together. Um, Looks a bit classier, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it and, looks great. Uh, and the uh, center wood, the body core, is uh, maple. Right there. That out of the, way. Um, the back is Purple Heart. And uh, there's some walnut in there, too, as a thing. And then... And the neck is maple. And uh, I think that is lace wood. Lace wood stripe. Wow. Um, and then, yeah, have, have this. Uh, actually, this, when I glued the neck blank together, I realized it was too short to make <laughs> uh, to make the full length that I needed. So you extended it? So I extended it. That's what this is. <laughs> oh, okay. Telescoping yeah. base. Yeah, it's telescoping. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I calculated, you know, it ended here, and mm-hmm. I needed it to end here. So how long with that 15-degree pitch, how mm-hmm. long, how thick would that piece of wood need to be? Wow. So yeah, so that's what that is. Um, yeah, I really like this instrument. It's got single coils, so it's super, super clear. And the point of all of this, my friends, is you can build one for you or for your loved one who plays bass. The better. short scale bass. The short scale. I have flat wounds on here now. So it's like. Flat wound strings sound more like upright bass, correct? Yeah, yeah. A little bit more. They're, they're a lot, you know, it's softer attack, not as much high end. Uh, what is that? Did the other one have four strings, or was it a five string? It was a five string. So you build them in four string, five string. Do you build six string ones? Yep. I've built, there we go, that's it. I've built um, four, five six strings. Um, one of which is the fretless one I mentioned, a six string fretless. Because uh, I was a, well, I still am a big fan of the band Primus. And he plays a six-string fretless bass, mm-hmm. doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Wanted, I really wanted to learn Primus songs, and I didn't have a six-string fretless bass, so I built one so that I could learn, learn Primus Problem songs. solved. Problem solved with some cedar that I found in my parents' backyard. Oh, look, some cedar. Yeah. I think I will make a bass. Yeah. Um, and the, I have another six-string fretless that I played in that blues band. Um, the six string, the acoustic I made is six string. Then I built a six string multi scale that I used for a few years in a band.
site do you have uh, a place online where people can go and look at read about and shop for a base um, right now I just have an Instagram page okay at Olympic instruments Olympic instruments yep Greg at Olympic instruments no nope. just just at Olympic instruments at the at sign yep at Olympic instruments well and if you go there it says my name there but the handle is Olympic instruments uh And folks, thanks for watching Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I'm Hal Weeks. You can support this program over on my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Hal Weeks. Thanks for watching, Greg. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Anything else you want to add? No, no, I'm good. Okay. I think All I'm right. good with that. All right. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. See you Friday. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. That's my interview with my friend Greg Olson. I'm looking forward to getting the other guys on here one day. Um, thanks again to my supporters over at Patreon. If you're interested in chipping in a little bit, giving a little bit back to this program, you can go over to patreon.com slash howweeks. Um, as always, I teach lessons through Zoom to you wherever you are in the world. You can contact me through my website, howweeks.com, and uh, find out uh, all about getting some private time working with me on your auto harp playing. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. <laughs>